So come onto your back if you're just joining in and take your feet about as wide as your mat or just a little bit wider than hip distance and let the knees fall in towards one another so that you feel a release into your hip flexors and into your lower back. And then rest your arms wherever they're most at ease. So that might be out to the side, palms face up, maybe on your belly, one hand on your heart, or even to take both arms overhead. So let yourself kind of cozy into this first shape. And then nestle the back of your heart down into the earth. And then let your awareness move onto your breath. And if you haven't already, begin to welcome your breath in with a sense of intentionality where you're stretching out your inhale and lengthening your exhale. And feel for the fullness of your breath, but in a way that it feels easy and not a struggle. I always like to think of our asana practice, all of the different poses, like a breathing exercise where your body is along for the ride. And so the breath is the priority. And so even if you stay here for your entire practice, breathing intentionally and fully, it's a great practice. However, if moving your body feels like an inspiring thing to do, on your next exhale, gently guide your knees into your chest, give yourself a squeeze. Then take your arms up to shoulder height, kick your heels away from you so that your thighs are vertical and your shins parallel to the floor. Have the inner feet and the inner knees connecting. And cinch your front ribs in. Actually, let's do this first to help you cinch your front ribs in. Place your palms onto the base of your thigh bone. And as you cinch your front ribs in, you're gonna feel your lower back smush down onto your sticky mat. And start to hug your knees into your palms and then your palms are pressing them back so that there's no movement happen happening and this is what we call an isometric muscular contraction where the muscles are engaging but the length of them is not changing and no bones are moving. And that's how we move our bodies is through various types of muscular contraction. So keep squeezing your knees into your chest and pressing your palms further away. Two more big breaths here. And then keeping your front ribs drawn in. From here, take your legs up towards the sky and interlock your fingers behind your head. With your front ribs drawing in, lower back down onto the floor. And keep your head and shoulders down or as your next exhale arise, lift your head and shoulders up but keep the elbows wide. And then from here, send your right leg forward to any degree so long as you can keep your lower back squished down onto the floor and the inner thighs are spinning into the midline. Your right leg is going to stay exactly as you have it unless you need to kick your blocks out of the way. And then slowly tap your left heel down to your right toes and then take it all the way back up and pull your leg a little closer into your body. Just four more on this side. You take them at your own pace and go as slow as you can. With every exhale, drawing your left leg even closer into your body. So it's the strength of your core that is essentially deepening the flexion of your left leg at the hip. That was a lot of information for starting out the practice. <laughs> Just keep breathing full and deep moving your breath and maybe moving your body. I think that was about five. Pause there. Keep your left leg up. Stretch your right leg up and then relax your head and shoulders for a breath. Take a full deep inhale 
and a slow, long exhale. Once again, front ribs draw in, head and shoulders can stay down or lift them back up. Stretch your left leg forward to any degree, moving towards a hover, but if you feel your lower back lifting up, then just lift your left leg up to accommodate that. So gauging and prioritizing the core. Then slowly right heel taps down, and then it hugs all the way in towards your chest, a little closer each time. So just like on the other side, the inner thighs are hugging in towards the midline. And the breath is fluid and free. After your fifth one, keep your right leg hugging into your chest. Then inhale, float your left leg up. Exhale, relax your head and shoulders and then draw your knees into your chest once again. Kick your legs away once again so that your legs are in a tabletop, shins parallel to the floor. Take your arms up to shoulder height. Take a full deep breath in. As you exhale, take your knees over to the right, almost to touch, but not quite. Then belly to spine, inhale, rise through center. Exhale, knees come towards the left to a hover. And a few cycles here, inhale, rise through center. Exhale, knees to the right. Then just kick your heels up a little bit more to deepen the twist. Inhale, come through center. Exhale, come down to the left. And then once you're down, kick your heels up. Inhale, center. And as you exhale, let your knees come all the way down to the right. Feel free to place your right palm on top of your left thigh and then roll your head over towards the left. Encourage your left hip to move away from your left shoulder so that your left side body gets a little bit longer. Then move the breath into your left side body. With your belly to your spine on your next inhale, rise through center. Then as you exhale, take them all the way down to the left. Placing your left hand on top of your right thigh. Keep your right shoulder earthy down to the floor and extend your right hip away from your right shoulder. With your belly drawing in and up on your next inhale, rise through center. And then exhale, squeeze your knees all the way in. Take a big breath in. Exhale, lift your forehead up towards your knees. Keeping the inner knees and the inner feet connected, stretch into an open boat pose as your heels and arms reach forward. With your belly drawing in, take a big breath in. As you exhale, rise up to Navasana, bent knees or straight legs is fine. Shoulders draw back. And still that connection of the inner feet and the inner knees are connecting strong, everything drawing to center. Take one more big breath in. As you exhale, step your feet hip distance apart, and then just support yourself forward, come into a forward fold. Set your blocks about shoulder distance apart at the top of your mat, and then fold in. Grab a hold of opposite elbows. Bend your knees as deeply as you need to to release your lower back, and let your head hang heavy. Let your breath wash over your body. If you want to take a little sway from side to side, you're welcome to do so. And if you are swaying from side to side, slowly come back through center. Release either palms to shins or fingertips to the floor. Inhale, stretch your heart forward, hug your shoulders back as you lift halfway. Exhale, fold in and let your head be heavy. Twice more like that, inhale, to a halfway lift, long spine, long neck. Exhale, fold in, let your head be heavy. Keep pressing through the four corners of your feet. One more, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Firm the muscles of your legs, inhale, rise to stand, let your tailbone root as your heart and hands lift. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward and release. Inhale, lift and lengthen, halfway up. Bow back into yourself as you release. Rise to stand, full deep inhale. Take as much space with your body and your breath as you can. Exhale, hinge at your hips, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen up halfway, pause. 
Take a big step back with your left foot, lower your left knee down to the floor, and then inhale, hook your thumbs together, and then rise into a low lunge. Breathing here. So with your thumbs hooked like butterfly shadows, pull your hands away from one another, and then with the hook of your thumbs, lift up. Chin draws back into any degree, lift your heart, and lift your gaze. Take one more full deep inhale to stretch up. As you exhale, release your palms to the floor. Lift your back knee and then hug your right knee into your chest with your shoulders on top of your wrist. Just your right leg is gonna move. So as you inhale, stretch it back. Exhale, take it over to your left upper arm and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Inhale, leg goes back. Exhale to your right upper arm. One more each side. Inhale, leg goes back. Exhale, over to the left. Inhale, leg goes back. Exhale to your right upper arm. Inhale, stretch your leg back. You can keep it up or down. And then slowly lower all the way onto your belly. Once you're down, place the tops of your feet to the floor. Keep your palms exactly where they are. Anchor your tailbone down. Inhale, rise to a low cobra using the strength of your spine. Exhale, lower down halfway. A few here. Inhale as you rise up, shoulders back, throat back. Exhale, halfway down. Keep your legs reaching back. Inhale, rise. Belly to spine. Exhale, halfway down. One more. Inhale to rise and pause here. Keep your elbows drawing in, shoulders down your back. You're welcome to stay there with your legs long and strong, lift them up and actively spin your inner thighs to the midline or bring the inner feet to touch. Feel the contraction of your back body to lift the front of your body. Take one more big breath in. As you exhale, just lower the tops of your feet to the floor, hip distance apart. Inhale to stay there or straighten your arms to up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, and pause. Easy breath, about three cycles here. Press down into your right foot. Inhale, lift from your left inner thigh. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Pause there, look forward as you inhale. Step forward as you exhale, lower your back knee down. Inhale, hook your thumbs with the other thumb on top so it'll feel a little bit strange, and then rise into low lunge on Jayasana. So as you ground into your left heel, nudge your left hip back, right hip forward. And then as you draw your front ribs in, similar to that connection like when you were on your back at the beginning, keep the connection to your center and then lift your heart and lift your gaze. Take one more full deep breath in. Perhaps lunge a little bit deeper as you breathe out. Inhale, stretch higher, side body long. As you exhale, plant your hands to the floor, lift your back knee, and hug your left knee to your chest. Just your left hip leg and your breath move. Inhale, lift leg back. Exhale, squeeze it over to the right. Inhale, leg goes back. Exhale, squeeze to the left. Inhale, leg back. Keep pressing through the inner hands. Exhale to the right. Inhale, leg goes back. Last one, exhale, knee to your left upper arm. Then inhale, leg goes back, look forward. Exhale, once again, lower all the way onto your belly. Once you're down, place the tops of your feet to the floor. This time, take your fingertips off your sticky mat. Elbows wing up, and then inhale, rise. So now you're really leveraging the back bend with your arms. Exhale, draw your heart forward and down. Belly to spine the whole time. Inhale to rise up. Shoulders back, throat back. Exhale, heart forward and down. Two more. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Last one, best one. Inhale to rise. Shoulders back, throat back, ears back. Exhale to lower. Let your palms beside your ribcage. Curl your toes under, roll your shoulders on your back. 
Anchor your tailbone down, take a deep inhale, then straighten your arms to plank as you exhale. Pause here for your breath in, downward facing dog, breathe out. And be very generous with your breath here and let it clear through your body. As you press down into the ridge of your palms, stretch as much as you can from your wrists to your hips. Lift your sitting bones up, aim to widen them apart, and then soften your heels to the floor. So with all of the alert awareness of those subtle muscular engagements through your body, then infuse the breath to create a sense of lightness. One more cycle here. Press down into your left foot. Inhale, take your right leg high. As you exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Look forward as you inhale. Step forward as you exhale. Rise onto your fingertips or grab your two blocks. Inhale, lunge a little deeper. Look up. Exhale, press your hips back and fold. Two more just like that. Inhale, come into your lunge. Collarbones wide. Exhale, hug your right hip back, left hip forward, release your head. One more, full deep breath in, and a slow, long breath out. As you inhale, come into your lunge, bend into your front knee. As you exhale, hover your fingertips and move your blocks forward if you had them. Then inhale, just stretch your arms alongside your ears as you keep your torso hovering above your right thigh. And as you stand earthy into your right heel, pull your right hip back and squeeze into your right glute. Then stay in the depth of your lunge. Inner thigh squeeze to the midline, then inhale, begin to rise to crescent pose. Keep the front ribs drawing in. So similar to your lower lunge, as the last round that we did with your back knee down, keep the front ribs drawing in. This time the arms stay shoulder distance apart and begin to lift your heart and lift your gaze. Take one more full deep breath in. Stay for your breath out. If you're in the back bend, inhale, rise through center. As you exhale, shift onto your right foot, hands onto your two blocks for supported warrior three. So I love doing this variation to really work the alignment of the pelvis because it's not an easy one to keep the hips in a neutral position. So with your hands on your two blocks on the highest height, stand onto your right heel and nudge your right hip back. Let your tailbone anchor down so you feel a few things here. You feel your glutes working, you feel your core working, and then stretch the crown of your head forward. And then just kind of sense into the alignment of what it feels like to have both of your hip points pointing down to the floor. Straighten your left leg even more, so that's the one that's up, and lift up from your left inner thigh. Take one more full deep breath in. From here as you exhale, bend your knees beside each other, but not to touch. Squeeze as much as you can into your right butt cheek. So squeeze into your right butt cheek pose. It's like a one-legged chair. Hands can stay down, or hands come to heart center and breathe. So the weight is in your right heel. Keep hugging your right hip back and squeeze your right leg cheek as much as you can. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Keep hugging your shoulders onto your back. And continue to have the weight into your right heel. Maybe bend a little deeper into your right knee. Take one more big breath in. As you exhale, bring your big toes to touch, knees stay bent. Inhale, chair pose. Never felt so easy. Exhale, fold forward and release. Halfway lift, breathe in. As you exhale, chaturanga, step or jump back and dissolve out your breath. Inhale to cobra or up dog, lift your heart. Exhale to lift your hips. Press down into your right foot. Inhale, take your left leg high. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose and pause. Look forward as you inhale. Step forward as you exhale. Rise to fingertips or grab your two blocks. Inhale, lunge a little deeper. Exhale, press back and bow. Twice more. Inhale, as you come into your lunge, keep your collarbones wide. Exhale, bow into yourself. One more, big breath in. 
and then full breath out. Really bow in, belly to spine. Inhale, come into your lunge, pause. As you exhale, bump your blocks forward or just hover your fingertips. Then the torso stays as you have it. On the inhale, stretch your arms forward. Anchor into your left heel and squeeze into your left glute. So when we come into that one-legged chair pose, it'll be the left butt cheek pose on this side. It's a similar sensation here, but once we take the back leg up, it gets a lot more alive. Stay in the depth of your leg and keep squeezing into your left glute. Inhale, rise to crescent pose. Anchor your tailbone down and lift the frontal hip bones up. And stretch from your waist beyond your fingertips. Maybe even take your arm bones back as you keep your front ribs in and explore a little or a lot of the back end. Breathe. Take one more full deep breath in and stay for your breath out. If you're in the back bend, inhale, rise to center. As you exhale, shift onto your left foot. Take your hands onto your two blocks. Organize your pelvis so that your hips are square to the floor. And so it almost feels like your inner thighs are crisscrossy because oftentimes the right hip kind of lifts like I'm doing here. But you want to roll the outer edge of your right hip down. So from the anchor of your left heel into the floor, nudge your left hip back. And for me, I even feel this into my outer left hip and down into my IT bed on the outside of my left leg. Anchor your tailbone down, lift up a little more from your right inner thigh and straighten your right leg, the one that's up, bottom strong. Then feel for the length from your shoulders all the way back to your right heel. Take one more big breath in and stay for your breath out. Inhale deeply. Okay, left butt cheek pose. Here we go. Bend into both knees. So it's almost like a one-legged chair pose, but the knees are not touching because I really want to activate the stabilizing muscles of the pelvis. From here, you can stay. Hands can be on your back, or hands can come into heart center and breathe here. So ensure that the toes are nice and light like little twinkle toes, weighted down into your left heel and squeeze into your left butt cheek. And then notice how this side is compared to the other. And just noticing the activation of the muscles that stabilize your pelvis, if this side feels stronger, the same, or weaker. For me, this side is a whole lot weaker. Maybe bend a little bit more into your left knee, or maybe not, and keep the breath moving. One more cycle. Big inhale. Bring your big toes to touch as you exhale. Utkatasana chair pose. Inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. Exhale, fold forward, long legs, long spine. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway up. As you exhale, step or jump back and cycle through vinyasa or we'll meet you in downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, lift your hips. Take a moment of pause here in down dog or child's pose. We've got about three breaths. Take this opportunity to get a little bit longer in the shape of your body and a little longer in the shape of your breath. Press down into your left foot. Inhale, take your right leg high. As you exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Look forward as you inhale, step forward as you exhale, warrior one, spin your back foot to the floor and then inhale, begin to rise and reach up. So similar to crescent pose, but now the back heel is down. Once again, hook your thumbs together and as you bend a little bit deeper into your legs, rooting equally into both feet. Use your thumbs to pull you up so you feel a lift up out of your hips through your side body and beyond your fingertips. Keep your front ribs drawing in like the core work on your back when you had your hands on your thighs. Two more breaths. Keep your chin parallel to the floor and give your back leg a little bit more responsibility. So really anchor down to the outer edge of your back foot. Take one more full deep inhale to stretch up. As you exhale, bring your hands down the midline and to your hips. 
As you inhale, extend your front leg, bump your left leg in so that your hips are square to the floor, or sorry, to the front of your mat with both feet to the floor. From here, inhale, stretch your arms all the way up overhead. As you exhale, two options with your arms. Either interlock your fingers behind you or take reverse prayer. Root your tailbone down, inhale, lift your chest. Then as you exhale, pull your right hip back and aim your heart forward and down. And once you're all the way into your fold, release the weight of your head. And as you press through your feet, keep magnetizing your inner thighs to the midline. With every inhale, even though you remain in your fold, can you lengthen through your spine? And then as you exhale to pull your belly in, can you fold in a little bit deeper? One more breath. Keep pressing down into your feet. Keep your arms in whatever expression you have. Then as you inhale, slowly begin to rise up. Then as you exhale, bring your hands to heart. Shift onto your right foot and then draw your left knee into your chest as you stand tall and proud. Take a deep inhale, stand tall. As you exhale, send your arms and your left leg forward like you're giving someone a high five. Take a deep inhale, then stretch your arms up. As you exhale, warrior three. So if warrior three feels like too much, Lucky you, you've got your two blocks and you can return into your supported warrior three. But see if you can find and prioritize first the breath and then secondly, that neutral position of your pelvis. So lift up from your left inner thigh. Anchor your tailbone down and stretch as much as you can from your left heel through your fingertips. Two more breaths. Take a full deep inhale. We're gonna come into a lunge as you exhale, start to bend into your right leg, plant your palms. Inhale to a three-legged down dog, keep your hips square and pause here. So this shape here is sort of like that supported warrior three, but you're just a lot more stretched out. So continue to lift up from your right inner thigh and stretch your right leg towards straight as much as you can. Take one more big breath in, lift your right leg higher. As you exhale, step your right foot forward. Inhale, step your left foot forward, bring your big toes to touch. Fold forward and release. Halfway lift, inhale. Bow into yourself, exhale. Bend your knees deeply, inhale, chair pose, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, twist to the right. Now we're gonna stay on our feet for today. Option is to keep hands to heart, or you can open up your arms if your left hand doesn't meet the floor. You can have your block on any height and open up your wings. Smooth, easy breath. Keep drawing both of your sitting bones back equally. And with every inhale, think to lift your heart away from your belly. And as you exhale, twist a little deeper. So just like the one-legged chair pose, here too with both feet down, the weight is in the heels. One more full deep breath in. Twist a little deeper as you exhale. Keep your knees then, inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, long legs, long spine. Inhale, lift and lengthen, stay on your feet. Exhale, fold back in. Bend your knees deeply, inhale, chair pose. Other side, exhale, twist to the left. So if you are keeping your hands at heart center, actively lift your heart so that your thumbs are right at the breastbone. And embody the essence of a back bend as you lift your heart away from your belly. Let your breath move into your side body and into your back body. Let the weight remain in your heels. Take one more full, bright breath in, and a slow, long breath out. Keep your knees bent. Inhale, return to center, chair pose, reach up. Exhale, fold forward and release. Halfway lift, inhale. 
Chaturanga as you exhale, step or jump back and empty out. Then inhale to lift your chest, shoulders back, throat back. Exhale, lift your hips. Press down into your right foot. Inhale to your left leg high. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Look forward as you breathe in. Step forward as you breathe out. Warrior one, so the back foot roots down. And then the inhale from that rooting, begin to rise up. Hook your thumbs with the other thumb on top. And so you're using your hands, that butterfly hook of your thumbs, to lift yourself up out of your waist. So that even while your legs have a lot of work to do here, anchoring down into the floor, strengthening through the lower body, you're lengthening and opening through the upper body. Front ribs draw in, chin parallel to the floor, and breath free. Soften through the forehead. One more cycle here. Take a big inhale, stretch your arms skyward. As you exhale, bring your hands down the midline and to your hips. As you inhale, move your left leg to straight. Then bump your right leg in however much you need to so that both of your hip points point forward. Then inhale, stretch your arms overhead. As you exhale, take your arms behind you. If you're interlocking your fingers, put the other thumb on top. If you're taking reverse prayer, it's symmetrical, so it's all good. Anchor your tailbone down, inhale, lift your heart. Then on this side, your left hip pulls back as you stretch your heart forward and then down. And once you're down there, let your head go. And once again, as you hold the shape of this pose, feel for the flow of your breath. So with every inhale, grow your spine a little longer. Then as you exhale, fold in a little deeper. Keep your belly drawing in. Press down through both feet. On your next inhale, slowly begin to rise all the way up. As you exhale, bring your hands to heart center, shift onto your left foot, and draw your right knee into your chest, stand tall and proud. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, arms forward and leg forward. Inhale, stretch your arms up overhead, keep the side body long. As you exhale, return to your expression of warrior three today. So maybe it's keeping the arms long, or perhaps bringing your hands onto your two blocks for supported warrior three. But like when you have the block, see if you can organize your pelvis in that neutral expression. Anchor the tailbone down so that you're strong through center. And then let your breath lift you, creating a sense of lightness from the inside. One more breath. Take a big inhale. Bend into your left knee as you exhale. Take a big step back as you plant your palms. Then inhale to a three-legged dog. Keep your hips square. Let your left inner thigh lift to the sky. So it's similar to warrior three, but also not. <laughs> similar in a way that your hips are square, your legs and your arms are long and strong. It is just a little bit more spacious. Take one more inhale, lift your left inner thigh a little higher. As you exhale, draw your, your knee to your nose, pause. Look forward as you inhale, step forward as you exhale. Inhale, right foot meets your left foot at the top of your mat. Fold forward and release. Halfway lift, inhale. Bow into yourself as you exhale. Bend your knees, inhale, chair pose with katasana. Keep your arms alongside your ears as you exhale, hover your torso above your thighs. You're welcome to stay there or consider lifting your heels and lowering your hips. You're welcome to stay there or taking crow pose, open up your knees, wiggle your knees up into the armpits or the outer edge of your shoulders, lean forward, look forward, and then start to squeeze one or both heels up. Breathe. 
Elbows in, inner thighs in, the gaze is forward. Holding here for five. If you freaked out when I said five, just notice that. Time flies, never push it away. And if it ever feels like it's going too fast, crow pose is a great place to remind yourself that time can be in the moment and it can be slow. We'll call that two. If you're in crow pose, bring your big toes to touch on your mat, coming back into that half chair pose with your heels hovering. If your heels are up, heels go down. Inhale, stretch up into Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, long legs, long spine. Halfway lift, breathe in. Step, step to plank pose as you breathe out. Pause here. Squeeze your legs, anchor your tailbone down. Take a big breath in. Stay for your breath out. Take one more full deep breath in. Downward facing dog, lift your hips up and back. Press down into your left foot, inhale to your right leg high. As you exhale, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand and pause here. Hug your right hip back and left hip forward. Then lower your left knee down onto the floor. Anchor your tailbone down. Option one, stay here. Option two, start to squeeze your left heel towards your left hip. And you should really feel through the tone of your hamstrings here. And it should almost be squeezing in so much that it might feel like a cramp or it might actually do that. And then you're welcome to stay there with your right hand to the inside of your right foot. Reach your left hand for your left heel. Breathing there or perhaps bring your forearm onto your thigh. Breathing there or perhaps start to reach your right arm behind you, hold the base of your ankle and flex your foot, then start to press your foot into your hands and begin to open up through your chest and maybe lunge a little deeper. Give your inner thighs hugging to the midline and belly to spine. Two more breaths. So there will be no slingshots here. If you are holding your back ankle, keep your left hand on it so that you can release your right hand to the floor. Left hand to the floor. Curl your left toes under, lift your left leg up, and then walk your hands around halfway to your left foot so you're facing the long edge of your mat. Inhale, lift the length and halfway up, and then exhale to fold in. Walk your hands through your legs, Press the reeds of Padottanasana A so that eventually the heels of your hands align to the heels of your foot. Then bend your knees a lot like you're going into a squat, but we're not. Press a lot to the inner edges of your feet. Think to widen your sitting bones apart. Keep pressing into the inner feet, widening your sitting bones, and then re-straighten your legs. So a couple options here. You can stay in your forward fold to focus on lengthening through the back body. If tripod headstand is calling your name, feel free to go up, provided that you do not have anything going on with your neck and shoulders or any headaches. So we're here for about four more breaths. If your feet are on the floor, keep pressing through the inner feet, weight into the knuckles of your toes, and then lengthening up the back of your legs, sitting bones spread wide. If you're in tripod headstand, squeeze the legs together. Last two breaths. If your feet are off the floor, slowly start to bring them back down. And on your next inhale, begin to lift your chest up halfway. Walk your hands to the inside of your left foot so you're facing the back edge of your mat now. And then from here, very gently place your right knee down onto the floor and lift your chest. So option one is to stay here, keeping both hands to the inner left foot, or anchor your tailbone down with just the strength of your hamstrings start to squeeze your right heel towards your hip. Breathing here. Notice how the hamstrings are on this side compared to the other. It's always good information. 
And then perhaps reach back with your right hand to hold your right ankle. Keep your torso pointing to the back edge of your mat. Breathing there, or maybe your forearm will climb up onto your thigh. Breathing there, or perhaps stretch your left hand to hold your right ankle. Flex your right foot, and then as you press your foot away from you, you begin to open up through the chest. Easy breath. Relax the tongue, relax the jaw, and let the breath do the work. Remember, this is like a breathing exercise, and your body is just along for the ride. If you're holding your right ankle, keep your right hand on it so that you can release your left hand to the earth, then the right hand. Stretch your right toes back, curl your toes under, lift your back knee, walk your hands around, again, so that you're facing the long edge of your mat. Take a deep inhale to lift your chest, Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway up, pause. As you exhale, take your arms out to shoulder height. Belly to spine, press down into your feet. Inhale, rise up, stretch your arms all the way up overhead. Then as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center and pause. Turn your right toes to the top of your mat and then step your left foot to meet your right foot. Then release your arms. Press down into your feet. Inhale, stretch for the sky, reach you, look up. Exhale, fold forward and bow in. Halfway lift, inhale. Step, step to plank pose as you exhale. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale for five counts, lower to your belly. Press through the inner hand for four. Anchor your tailbone down. Three, two, one and a half, and one. Once you're down, release the tops of your feet to the floor. Stretch your arms alongside your body, palms pressing down into the floor. With your forehead or chin down onto the floor, all you're gonna do is lift your shoulders up so you feel the muscles between your shoulder blades ignite to hug them together so that there's a widening in the front of your heart. Keep pressing down into your palms, and then inhale, begin to lift your chest. With your legs long and strong, option to lift your legs. Breathing here, option to lift your arms. Your arms are lifting, have your palms face one another, and imagine like you're holding a block. We won't do that. I won't be mean today. <laughs> Keep hugging your arms towards one another, the inner thighs towards one another. Keeping your arms exactly as you have them. Bend both legs and lift the thighs up. Holding here for three. Inner thighs in, hold two. Lift your legs, lift your heart. And then exhale, straighten your arms and lower everything down and take a pause. Let your whole back body soften. One more breath. On your next inhale, come back to center. Anchor your tailbone down. Same, same. Hug your shoulder blades together and lift your shoulders away from the earth. Belly to spine. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, lift your legs. Option from here, once again, lift your arms, palms face one another, and stretch your fingertips back for your heels. From here, like you did before, squeeze your heels through your hips, and then maybe catch your ankles, done your asana, press your feet into your hands. Inner thighs hug to the midline. Keep kicking your feet into your palms. The inner thighs are hugging in, everything neutral today so far. Keep pressing your feet into your hands to open your heart. Take one more big inhale, and then slowly come on down as you exhale. Relax your arms, look over the other shoulder and soften. No tension. On your next inhale, come back through center. Reach both arms forward. Bring your forehead down to the floor. I'm going to keep my head lifted so that my voice continues to project forward. Stretch your legs back, 
Press down through the tops of your feet, anchor your tailbone down, and as you tone the muscles of your legs, your knees will lift up off the floor. From here, stretch your right leg back a little bit more and your left arm forward a little more, working into opposite sides. Then start to lift your left arm and your right leg and breathe here. Smooth, easy breath. Get a little bit longer. So think more to go horizontal and then go up. Smooth, easy breath. From here, start to bend your right leg, back stroke your left arm, so left hand holds right foot. You can turn your right palm down, and as you kick your left, your right foot into your left hand, you can press your right hand down to lift your chest. Maybe bring your palm a little closer into your body so that you become a little bit more upright. Breathing there, or start to lift your left leg, or start to lift your right arm. Everything is hugging in, inner thighs in, and arms hug in. Take one more big breath in, then exhale, slowly release, extend both legs back, and both arms forward, release your head. Take one more full breath. Then from here, start to stretch your left leg back a little more, stretch your right arm forward a little more. And then reach horizontally, and then reach up. So lots of options, and you can stay right here. Getting longer with your right arm forward and your left leg back. Or from here, start to bend your left leg, reach back with your right hand, grab a hold of your foot and press down. Then you can leverage the back and maybe bring your left hand closer to your body so that you're using your arm like that rolling cobra pose at the beginning to leverage the back bend. Or from here, lift your right leg, lift your left arm so that it becomes more strengthening rather than opening. We need both. Two more cycles of your breath. Keep lifting up from your right inner thigh and getting long and lifted. Inhale to rise up and then exhale to lower, form a little pillow with your palms and relax your forehead. Take one more breath. On your next inhale, prop yourself up onto your forearms so that your forearms are parallel to one another. Both of your legs stretch back equally, your tailbone draws down, and then with your arms, it's like you're pulling them in the direction of your hips so that you can feel the bottom tips of your shoulder blades move forward so that your heart moves forward and then your eyes are shining in the direction of your heart. Always a good place to look. Either stay here or walk your legs together, look down towards the floor, Curl your toes under and lift into dolphin plank pose. So feel like a really nice counter pose for your lower back. You can stay there. Or with your elbows still underneath your shoulders, dolphin pose. Walk your toes towards your shoulders and press your heart in the direction of your thighs. Breathing there or maybe take up one leg and add in a little bit more balance. So remember that stretched out three-legged down dog, or more specifically, your supported warrior three, so the pelvis stays neutral. If you want to add a lot more balance, feel free to take a few little hops up into forearm stand. Whichever option you're in, whether you're in sphinx pose, in dolphin plank, dolphin pose, one leg or both leg lifted, keep the front ribs drawn in so that you're really connected into your core. Smooth, easy breath. If you've got one leg up, take the other leg up. If both legs are up, hug the inner thighs and the mounds of your big toes to touch. Last three breaths. If you have two legs up, lower one down, then bring both down. From here, look forward. If you're in dolphin plank, come into dolphin pose. 
Look in between your hands, bend your knees, take a deep inhale, straighten your arms, downward facing dog as you exhale. Step your feet hip distance apart. For the last time, press into your left foot, inhale, take your right leg up. Exhale, dolphin pose. Not dolphin pose, pigeon pose. You're like, what's happening? <laughs> take your right knee over by your right wrist. Lower your left knee down, walk your toes back. Walk your fingertips back. Full right inhale. Bow in as you exhale. We're going to get things a little bit more passive for a while. But here too, let your hip bones square down to the floor. So there's a tendency to kind of roll over to your right hip here. But let the left hip get a little bit earthy. So this is the first time that we're moving our legs into external rotation here with the right leg. So after all of this strength into the hips and into the glutes, we've got to love them up just as much as we strengthen them. So soften into the space at the back of your heart. And soften into the ebb and flow of your breath. And really do let the breath do the yoga for you. So as you experience this pose, and as time goes on, as you continue to hold this pose, just notice how things are shape-shifting from the inside. So attending to not only the physical sensations, perhaps around your hips, and maybe even into your lower back. But notice how there may be some different shifts in how you're breathing, or how you're feeling. And can you meet those sensations of body, breath and heart exactly as they are. So being alert and awake to what's happening now. Let your next exhale be a little longer than the last one. And then on the arrival of your next inhale, slowly come on up, let your hands shoulder distance apart, curl your left toes under, lift your back knee, and draw your right knee to your nose. Inhale to a three-legged dog, keep your right knee bent, roll your hips open. Option one, stay here. Option two, flip it over, step your right foot as close as you can to your left hand, lift your hips, lift your heart, and stretch your right arm towards the earth. Eventually, your left leg will be straight. Use that leg to lift yourself up. And inhale, take your right arm up. Exhale, flip it over. And then return to regular down dog. For the last time, press into your right foot. Inhale, left leg up. Pigeon pose, other side. So make your way into this side. Start to walk your fingertips back, hug your left hip back, and then begin to bow in. I invite you to close your eyes. And once you find your way into the second side, you have your alignment of this shape. Begin to soften into your experience and experience your experience for whatever it is that you've brought to your mouth and for whatever is most alive and present for you in this moment. Let the back of your heart soften.
Unhinge your jaw. And notice where you need a little more space. So essentially, a little more breath. And gift that to yourself. Can you soften into your experience a little more? And maybe you would ask, why? Why soften? When there is a softness, there is a greater sense of sensitivity and receptivity to become more alert and aware, to notice and to feel. So essentially becoming more present. Let your next exhale be a little longer than the last one. And on your next inhale, slowly begin to rise up, settle your hands outer shoulder distance apart, curl your right toes under and tone your right leg long. As you exhale, draw your left knee to your nose. Then as you inhale, three-legged dog, keep your left knee bent. Either staying here or shift your shoulders forward. Roll your right shoulder onto your back as you step your left foot as close as you can to your right hand and lift your chest, lift your hips, lift your breath. With your belly to your spine, inhale, left arm reaches up. And then as you exhale, flip it over to your three-legged dog. And then regular down dog pause. Take a deep inhale, breath. Lower to your knees as you exhale. Cross your ankles. Have a seat. Scoot your bottom ear to the front edge of your mat as you bend your knees, reach your arms forward, inhale, and then slowly lower all the way down as you exhale. Let your shoulders arrive first, then your head, and then your arms, then let the knees return to the chest. Take happy baby pose. Couple options here. You can grab a hold of your shins. I seem to prefer this version lately. Or you can hold the outer edges of your feet. That's a good option too. Let your hips be heavy. And aim for your knees to draw down towards the earth. Either staying at center or gently rocking from side to side. Supta Baddha Konasana, let the outer edges of your feet come down onto the mat. Roll your shoulders underneath you and let your palms rest on your body. Or take your arms out to the side or take your arms overhead. That word or reminds me a lot when I'm in teacher training and teaching the philosophy component we go through Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and it's a book that is primarily about psychology and the mind and in the first chapter there's like a handful of sutras it's like do this or do this or and he keeps going on and on and on and so basically he's saying whatever works do whatever works, essentially, to keep your mind calm. It's like, do some yoga poses, or do your pranayama breathing, or meditate, or, and he keeps going on, it's like, do whatever works for you. So if this shape does not feel easeful in your body, or if it's disturbing the mind, go ahead and move into another shape. It might be shavasana. Or it might be <laughs> going up to a tall seat and finishing your practice there in a seat of meditation. Or whatever works. So you do you. Then finding a shape here where there is a sense of ease. So that your 
mind can become more spacious, more peaceful. And so in that book of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, the second verse is these book of, of little tiny gems, little pearls of wisdom, if you will. And the second little gem, he describes yoga. And he says, yoga chitta vritti nirodha. So yoga is when the mind is still. When all of the fluctuations of the mind get really quiet. So then we have clear vision, pure awareness. So in Shavasana, like a little touchstone of that experience, Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda. The state of yoga is attained when the fluctuations of the mind become still. eyes closed in your next few breaths, go ahead and make your way to a tall seat. And as you make your way to this final shape, however you've chosen to sit, kneeling or cross-legged, Feel for the length of your spine as you stack your shoulders above your hips. And so as we align our body in this very clear and intentional way, and it is representative of the inner body alignments to move the inner body towards a very clear, place of alignment as well, so that our intentions, our values, our morals, all our goals, our visions, our inspirations, and our aspirations that we hold on the inside, that they align with life on the outside. And so may you use this practice to hold yourself in that higher place. Take an inhale, sit taller. Fold your hands together at your heart center as you exhale and gently bow in. Bowing in to the highest that you can be, to the highest that you already are. And we bow into the highest in one another. To the highest and the greatest good for ourselves and for each other. Namaste.